Welcome back for Guff Stuff Weekly. My name's Scott and my partner in crime, Javen. So this week, we're talking about uh, something near and dear to my heart, and it's probably going to hurt my feelings a little bit. As most of you or some of you may know, I think I'm not sure if I've talked about it on the podcast or not. I, I run a small game store. I guess that's what it used to be called. And now I think it's just a club, but it, it's still a small game store. I still have stuff for sale. Still an LGS. Yeah. But today we're going to be talking about game stores and what we like to see as from a store owner prospect or perspective and then a customer, customer and a patron. So uh, I guess we'll start with the customer. What, as you as a customer, do you want to see in a game store? The first thing I, I love to see when I go into a game store that just makes my heart smile, if you will. Uh-oh. Um, I love to see ample gaming space. Yep. And people playing games. There you go. Well, um, that gets my blood going. It gets me interested. <clears throat> if I walk in, I would have never played 40K, Warhammer 40K. Right. If I wouldn't have walked into a game store and been like, seen people playing and been like, oh, cool, what's this? Right. Um, there you go. I mean, that's, that's legit. It's a, it's a huge part of LGSs and local game stores. LGS, local game store. Um, it's a huge part of them to me. Um, and a huge part of the community uh, is why it's like was really hard during COVID, because you'd walk into the game store and it'd just be like nothing crickets, nothing going on, crickets going on. Yeah, if you lived in a state that was shut down, well, we didn't even like here in Minnesota, we didn't even we couldn't even be open for the most part. And I love to see game stores that have <clears throat> play test materials. Yeah, um, my favorite game store in the whole wide world, <laughs> Grand Cities Games. Yep, has a whole shelf. And a whole room dedicated to just board games that are store use. Right. Anybody can come in. Anybody can play them. Um, the other game store I frequent quite a bit had the same deal. Had a huge shelf with board games in it. And uh, the owners would always be playing new stuff. Um, you'd always have patrons in there playing new stuff. Um, they had a guy basically dedicated just to running games. There you go. Uh, which I guess is pretty common in bigger game stores. I don't know. I've never been to a huge game store. Right. No, I, I haven't either. I've, most of the ones I've been to were pretty small. So kind of base all my opinions off of what I run and what I've been to. Yeah. I do like seeing the <clears throat> gaming space. Now, I run a pretty small store, and I don't have a lot of territory to work with, but I do have a game space. I always will. If that's the last thing I do is I'll have a table here to sit down and play at. Yeah. And I think it. I do have you know stuff you can use in a store. I have DM reference stuff. I have rows of RPGs people can use for reference material or play use as a DM or even as a player. So I do like seeing that too. That's important. How does it make you feel when you see gamers playing in the game store? <clears throat> I like it. I'd rather have the store full of people sitting around playing. I I do like the idea of making money off the players because you know that's my perspective of it. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't want to get wealthy and sick rich off them. I just want to, I feel that <clears throat> as a store owner, when a, when a customer comes in and if they invest a little bit of money in your store, whether they're buying soda or dice. dice or a product off the shelf, and then they sit down and play, they're investing in the store itself. Not not me. They're not investing in me, but they're investing in the play space. The community. The community, which yeah. is really important. That's way more important than... At least for me, that's the most important thing is the community. Because without the community, then there's really nothing to deal with. Yeah, it's it's hard to solo play. Yeah, no Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I know when I was when I was uh, considerably younger, there was no gaming place to go and game at. So when I opened this place, the idea was is. And in my 20s, I had nowhere to go. We always had to go over to a friend's house or people had to come over to my house. There's always the cleanup and the dealing with all the people. And some people don't like leaving your house at, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning. They want to stay all night. Yeah. <clears throat> We're here at the store. I don't have to really worry about that. Like, get a couple key holders. Key holder wants to stay late. Have fun. Knock yourself out, guys. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree with you on all of that. The, the, and I think it just gives a community, is a community presence by just having all that. So, yeah. um, the other thing I like to see in game stores, uh, when I walk in immediately, I like to see people playing, like I said, right. Yep. Um, I also, I'm a, I'm a huge magic the gathering fan. So I love to see cards, right. Glass display tables with cards in them. And 
it's, it gets you excited. I know when I had my books out, it, that was the first thing most people would walk to. Yeah. Even if they didn't really play Magic all the time, they were just casual players. Can I see your books? Like, yeah, why? Your rares, scratch, yeah. scratch, scratch, scratch. Yeah. I need, I need to look. I haven't changed it since the last week. That's okay. I still need to look. Yeah. It's like, okay. Well, because the gears are always turning. You're always thinking about what you want to build. <sighs> right. And it's like, it's like going to a restaurant and seeing the menu. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Out in front of you. And it's, it's just like, there. oh, I could, oh, this looks really good. You know, I want to try some of that. It's going to a buffet. And you're like, yeah. oh, oh exactly. I got to try it yeah. all. Yeah, Holy I wanna, crap. I want to try it all. Um, that's a big thing for me is just seeing cards when I come in. I like to see lots of um, gamer paraphernalia, I guess you'd call it. Like yeah. um, posters and right. action figures. And I, I really, it feels like home when you walk in and it's right. like, there's this. <clears throat> It's almost cluttered. Yeah. I, I like game stores that have a little bit of clutter and you yeah. have to crawl through and dig and find. Grand City is a good example of that. Really, they have everything. And it, it's floor to ceiling. Yeah. And like it's, every corner of the building is full of something. Mm-hmm. If you dig far enough, you'll find something you really want. Yeah. You will. Everything from Iron Maiden <clears throat> action figures to <laughs> yep. a giant Star Trek Borg cube yeah. to little itty bitty Pokemon 3D prints that yeah. you see in your store. Yeah. Yeah, it's. It's a, I know with a bigger store, Grand City is, I mean, definitely bigger, but I wouldn't say that they're 10 times bigger. I mean, maybe mon- monetarily wise they are. Yeah. But they're, I'd still consider Grand Forks a small community. It's still a, a mean, small LGS, but a very thriving one. Yeah. Well, you know, when you get this cold ass weather outside, you, you just don't want to yeah. be outside playing. So you go and you sit in the store and play. Um, no, I agree. It's all good. That's all good stuff. The other thing I like to see a lot of is I like to see a lot of terrain for war games. Yeah. Um, like, if you have shelves lined with terrain for war games, um, Broken Sentry, the other game store, was really good about that. Just they had piles of trains just in there. tons of terrain in there. And when you wanted to play a war game, you just show up, you grab it off the <clears> shelf, <throat> and you put it on the table, and you build a war gaming table. And we used to just sit there and build tables. Um, like, we knew a bunch of gamers were coming right. in to play, like, Star Wars Legion or something. Or 40k, yeah. We would build a bunch of tables for them. Oh, that's cool. And so when they came in the next day, you'd have two people that had never seen the table before, right? It's to, all set up that sit down and play, and then now they don't get to tactically place for their um, right teams or anything like that. They have to play with what's given, right? And it, it makes it exciting for them. That's a good, um, yeah, that's a good for idea. a lot of those players. I know. I know when I first got Warhammer back years back, the first thing they sent me was a. A big tabletop, and I did what they said. I based it, I colored it, I put the grass on it. Yeah. And I think I picked up five or six different players that never even considered trying a war game at that point, just because of that stupid big piece of plastic. Well, it's cool. You see a battlefield. No, it's really cool. Like, it is. It is. You see this big battlefield, and you're like, "Well, I want to put minis on it and yeah. fight somebody on it." Yeah, know? that's why. That's why I keep now. I've started keeping. Lots of D and D terrain, fantasy, you know, the tabletop RPGs and minis. I have painted minis; people can use whatever they want. Mm-hmm. I do have when we put now we're playing Gaslands quite a bit. We started getting some Gaslands terrain, you know, and people have brought stuff in for me to use, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, if it just get put away once in a while, that'd be yeah, really great. Well, that's that's part of the other thing. The rule there was <laughs> if you take it off the shelf, you have to put it back. That's true. That's a good idea. I need Before I need some real leave. shelves. That's what I need. Yeah, that's one thing we're missing here is some good shelf space. One day. One day we'll get there. One day when I push up the wall and take over the next take over the next next, next room. Yeah, should I should have done it when I had the chance? Yeah, I really should have. All right, so we like that. This is good. I agree on everything. I can't even argue with you on that. That's interesting because you know most of the time I, I think about this stuff. I think what do what do gamers want? And I think about this stuff, you know, and I put these things out. And I'm like, oh, it just sits there. And it just sits there, and maybe it does just sit there. Maybe nobody ever uses it. But like you said, it's that excitement. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, nine times out of ten, people who've never even played tabletop RPG will come back here and look at the minis because there's so many they can just look at and, and they're touch painted and, and they got character. Right. And, and they're like, wow, that's pretty cool stuff. Yep. <laughs> um, the other thing I, I think is a huge deal is um, a interactive, um, not clientele. What's the word I'm looking for? The proprietors. Yeah. I like when the proprietors are interactive. Right. Um, hey, what's going on? What games have you been playing? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your Dungeons right. & Dragons campaign. Right. Um, 
and you know you could just sit and talk about your your game that you're super excited to play in and super excited to run with somebody who has probably run a game like that, who has the experience. Yeah. And because if you're running a game store, you're a gamer. I'm sorry. There's, no, there, no, there is yeah. no. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Um, every game store I've ever been in um, has always been run by a, a that hard gamer. Yeah. I mean, why else would you do it? Well, yeah, there's no there's, other reason. To there's, do it. there's no other reason to do it. You're not you're not going to get wealthy off this, and if you are, you're. I'm definitely in the wrong city for that. Mm -hmm. But I agree. I, it's almost a rule in my store. And I know with the locals that come in on a regular basis, it's almost a rule that if you come in the store, you actually have to acknowledge me, and we have to talk a little bit. Yeah. And I've kind of just made that a point. And the new people, when they come in, if I haven't met them before, I always introduce myself. I always talk to them. I always see what they're into, what kind of games they're looking for. Yep. You know, and I don't do a lot of video games, so a lot of times they're like, oh, I'm looking for a PS5 controller. Well, I mean, I probably should carry PS5 controllers. Yeah. I really should. But but the other thing, too, is like you've had a lot of people come in, and they're like on the periphery of gaming. Yep. Um, who... Oh, Dungeons and Dragons, I've heard of that. Yep. Tell me a little bit about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Actually, a lot of, my play a lot of the players now... Most of them never even played an RPG until they came in here. Yep. And whether it was a you know a paid you know whether it was like somebody like you that was here or just me or one of the other people that come in on a regular basis that pushed them into it, yeah. I think most of them would have never even known what an RPG we, was. We, we have a new player. Let's call him Joe. Um, <laughs> there you go. We'll call him Joe. We'll call him Joe. Joe recently <laughs> came into our life. Yep. We'll call it. Yep. As the, as a gaming community. Um, as a guy who was interested in gaming, um, never really played or no, not he knew played mostly a video really. gamer. Yeah, mostly a PC video gamer. And uh, he came in, and one of the patrons that, of the joint, uh, who was sitting here playing a game, invited him in yeah. to play in a campaign. Next thing you know, Joe is playing <laughs> two campaigns. And pretty and soon it'll be more. Pretty soon it'll be more. Yeah, and he's he's hooked, and he's yeah. having a great time, and. You know, hopefully we can get the interest in him to DM or something like that eventually. Yeah. I feel like he would make a decent DM. I, I think so. And He's I think, very knowledgeable on what he I think a few of the patrons that I've, that I've got over the years that have come in here have turned out to be really phenomenal. Like, they're really into it. They world build well. They come up with some decent stories. And sure, there's always hiccups or whatever, but most people don't care. No. Yeah, players understand that as long as they don't have to DM... <laughs> Yeah. They got a world to play in. They'll forgive some of the hiccups. Yeah, and would I would so said Joe. I know that he he when he first came in, there was no we didn't really have an open group. We didn't have any games except for the ones that uh, you were offering. And I'm like, well, maybe just hang out with us, get to know us a little bit. Yeah, that, I think that if I was going to say is one of my I, we're not I'm kind of moving on to the next subject a little bit. It's one of the things I don't like as a store owner is a player walking in. Whether they're a new player or they're an old player, and just expecting to be part of the group, like you've been here for, it, which is yeah. fine and dandy. If we have an open spot, most of the time it doesn't matter. You know, like in most games, it doesn't matter. But sometimes you're you're full. Like for a while there, we were full. I mean, every group was full. We had six players plus in every group. Yeah. Like we don't have open space. And some of the campaigns were year long, multiple years long. Yeah. I keep telling them, hey, why don't you sit down, and hang out with us for a little bit. When a player comes in, or if we feel like we can add another player, then we'll just add you. Yeah. And Joe did that very well. Yeah, Joe did that very well. Joe yeah. sat and just hung out for like three weeks before he actually started playing. Yeah. And then he just like, he's. And he was. Like, I will say he was pretty dang respectful when he was yeah. here too. Yeah. He yeah. wasn't like injecting himself into the game or anything yeah. like that. No. He throw out suggestions here and there, which is fine. Yep. I mean, of course, you're hanging out with us for four hours. We're not yeah. Tell you no, that. no, no, no. You you can still be interactive without being a complete jerk about it for sure uh -huh. yeah every once in a while though there's been a few players that have come through and i'm i don't usually turn players away ever but there's been a few times where i've had player come in here and hey you know you got an open session or can we come in and play this time and i'm like sure you know i do have some rules and conditions well what's that and i tell them and they're like oh well if we can't drink we can't play i'm like well good luck finding that in any game store uh -huh. because there's so many liability issues well, you know, then they get kind of snarky with you. And you're like, well, I'm sorry. That's just how it goes. That's not the atmosphere I want anyway in my store. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're a pretty family-friendly store. And then even if even if the game does have some darker elements oh, to right, it. Oh, right, right. Um, I've found that um, 
We yeah. usually talk about that stuff beforehand. Yeah, you just play with what the table's allowing you. Same thing. We've had magic tournaments. You just your language and your behavior should be based on the people in the room. Yeah, not just however you want to be. I mean, we've been blessed up here. We have a really good community of people. It's the only reason I think this store is still around is because the community is pretty awesome. But that that would be one just fault. I don't know. As a patron, what is one thing you really don't like to see when you come into a game store? Be gentle. Just in case it's in mine. <laughs> um, one of my biggest pet peeves when I come into a game store yep. is the proprietor of the store being uninteractive. Oh, yeah, no. You won't, I won't do that. Uh, where they just kind of let you walk around. and Right. Like, Because ultimately, if you're coming into a game store... You're either an introvert looking for some social interaction. Right. Yeah, exactly. Or you're an extrovert looking for some social Either interaction. way, you're looking for some kind of interaction. You're looking for some sort of social interaction. Right. You're and not... to, to walk in and have somebody just be grumpy and moody grouchy with you. and moody yeah. with you is... Man, it's it's just... I can't say I've never been grumpy with people before. I try really hard not to be. I, I haven't encountered but... it with you. Well, I mean, unless it was intentional. But... Right, which we're friends at this point. <laughs> right, so oh yeah. It's... It's all par for the course right. at this point. Um, the curmudgeonness is expected between us. <laughs> exactly. You wouldn't know it by listening to the podcast. No. No. <laughs> no, we agree on everything. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, the other thing I... Uh, it doesn't... It's not like a pet peeve or, like, is sad to me. But, like, to see... And, like, I understand coming from, like, a an inventory standpoint. But to come in and see the same inventory... Oh, yeah. And it never like restocked or anything like that. Right. That that hurts a little bit. Oh yeah. Because no you, you come in, you want to see new, fresh things. It's <coughs> it's exciting things. It is. But it's it's hard to do as a as a store owner. I, I mean. Well, at least for me, the biggest qualm now is since the big C word, you know, the twenty twenty pandemic. The biggest problem now is just money flow. I that I have to pay my bills, and I, before this before that happened. I, I could order for, you know, I could order every week, and I had new stuff coming in every mm-hmm. week, which wasn't, I mean, just, you could pretty much guarantee next week I'd come in, there'd be something new somewhere. Yeah. After that, though, the, the amount of retail customers coming in was slimmed down, so we switched over to this kind of sitting area playing clubhouse almost, clubhouse almost yeah. kind of thing, and there's not enough money to be had from that to refresh every week on stuff now i'm working on it and i can completely agree it's i don't like coming in here or going into a store and seeing the same you know 72 items in the well i have more than 72 but anyway yeah so i agree 100 percent. It, it sucks it, from a store standpoint it's literally a money thing yeah and i understand you that know? so i try to counteract that by making sure that you know some of my friends introduce new games all the time yeah and then there's always these other players that want to get new people so we do try to buy stuff for those games you know like pathfinder we bought a bunch of stuff for that that way and you did for dcc and um stars without number and the other game that you're playing blades in the dark, blades in the dark. i always call it pen and blade or something i don't know but yeah no i agree i can't argue that one at all it's 100 percent agreeing on that one it sucks, and it sucks from a owner, a store owner standpoint, and it sucks as a player standpoint too. Yeah. So, it, it, it like you said, it, it's hard to get excited when you come in and go, "Oh, nothing's changed." Yeah. I think even sometimes, I know in the past I've just moved stuff around in my store, and it makes a difference. Yeah. So, um, one of the game stores I used to go into, they called me the lapper when I was there because I'd always <laughs> walk a lap. Right. Just see what's moved and then I'd, I'd pick something out and I'd set it on the table to buy. And I'd walk another lap. Right. And I'd do that two or three times a week. That was Grand City, wasn't it? No, that's Broken Century. Oh, broken Century, okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they set up a chronic lapper. You just got to keep going around and around and around. keep going around and around. And um, I don't know. It's just seeing that fresh inventory, that fresh new thing yeah. really injects some excitement. Well, I can say right now, though, I, I've been paying a lot of attention. I think we're kind of in a lull. Other than, I mean, if you're, and, and this is not really game store. Well, I mean, it is game store related because with all the big companies, whether it's Watsy or 
Piazzo or whoever, I mean, all these big Asmode and all these other companies, there's not a lot of like big new stuff coming out right now. Yeah. I think they're saving it for the late summer, start getting into yeah. fall next year. I know I get trade magazines all the time, and it's just uh, not as exciting as it could be, that's for sure. So, uh-oh. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's how that goes. And so, can't argue. So, we'll move on to the last topic, if that's okay. Yeah. Unless okay. there's something you want to add to it. No, I'm good. Um, the last topic is, if you could have something in a game store that you normally don't see, whether it's, you know, like a small one like we got or a bigger one, what what would it be? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, one of the things I don't see... And I think would be kind of nice to uh, make like a talking point mm-hmm. would be to have a TV screen up, yeah, with something playing in the background related to gaming. Yeah, like yeah, definitely. I remember back in the day you had that TV yeah. screen up here, and you oh, had gosh. Duncan Rhodes painting GW figures, right? Yeah, and yeah, it, it made a great talking point. And it yeah. was like, oh, what's that guy doing? You know, when you're talking to the store owner, you're like, well, what's this all about? Right. And that's one thing I I. I really like, I think it makes a big difference. It's a little bit of work to keep it up. It can be. And it actually have a TV sitting right over there for that purpose, yeah. believe it or not. It's just, I've been focused on other things, which is a terrible excuse, by the way. If you're a store owner, saying you're busy with something else is a terrible excuse. You have 24 hours a day, use them all. But I don't have 24 hours in a day, so... Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that maybe that's a project we need to work on. Yeah. Because I, I love that idea. You can put events up there. You can have a PowerPoint just going in circles. Yeah. You can have videos playing. You can... Pictures of the GMs. Yeah, so yeah. People can be like, oh, associate a picture with a face. Right. You know, what game they're playing. What game they're playing. What's have... about a little snippet about what the game's Yeah, about. definitely. And I actually have a computer at home I should bring in for that. <sighs> Yeah, no, that's for sure. That's the one thing I'd love to see in every store. It's nice. Because, yeah. you know, when you walk into, say, like back in the day, I don't know, well, Circuit City's not in business anymore, but Best Buy still is in business. You could walk in, and lots of times their TVs are, like, literally promoting the stuff they have in the store at yeah. all times. And you're like, oh, and then you're off wandering around. And, and it's just another injection of interaction. Yeah. How about for you? What do you like to see? Or what would you like to have in your game store? That you don't have. I, for me, the biggest thing I would like to have that I don't have space for, just because I literally have a small store, is I would love, like in Grand City, I know for most people listening, you're not going to have any idea what Grand City is, but it's just a bigger game store in a town about 150 miles away. But so it's kind of exciting to get out and go see, you know, but they have a big selection of foreign foods and foreign snacks. Yep. Like I have access to buying that. But to make it worth your while, you have to buy so much of it to make the price come down. Yep. Otherwise, I got to charge eight dollars for a bottle have of soda like, from Japan. Yeah, or like mochi or something right. like that. Something you know, for someone else to try. Like if I could just put the whole back wall of just foreign foods and snacks, I would. Yeah. But but the, your back wall is pretty small. Right. I just like it's a small back wall. It, it's holding terrain right now. Yeah, and it's so that's what I I love to see that when I first. That was the first thing I noticed when you walk into Grand City. Yeah. They have, well, of course, they have stuff everywhere. But right in front of you was a cooler. Like, you walk in, there's a cooler, like, right at the counter. Yeah. And it had, I think it was some kind of soda from Japan, Japan yeah. a glass yeah. bottle of soda. And it, it, like, I'm like. Yeah, you break a bead. And it's oh, it's like, and... oh, man. And then they had snacks, and they had all kinds of stuff. When you go off to the left there, they yeah. had all kinds of stuff there. I loved, I, I think every game store should have. And it don't have to be foreign. Like, you know, every game store should almost have a cooler and food. Yeah. Within res- limits, obviously, you don't want to have, like, spaghetti and stuff. Yeah. So that's just asking for Or popcorn. That That's a big pet peeve, walking into a game store and having popcorn. I don't like that because really? it's messy. Yeah. Messy, and gamers are notoriously messy. Yeah. So, yes, I'd, I like to see that when I walk into a store. I really do. That's a cool one. Yeah, it, 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 it's like seeing train. It's just exciting to me. I'm like, oh. What's this? I mean, I can sit here and play, and I can try something new. Like, I can put something new in my gullet. I'm like, yes. And then it kind of gets me all excited about trying it in my store, which I've found distributors for. I just, the space is a big, big, bad thing for me right now. Yeah. But I'll work on that. I will. 
Anyway, I think we've covered a lot on this topic. Um, maybe we'll go back to it with a little more in some of the other subjects that maybe we didn't get to. You know, like, I'd like to talk about what kind of tables you'd like to have, you yeah. know, stuff like that. You know, I, it's just there's a few other things I like to add to that I've seen other game stores do. There's a guy in Canada I really would love to talk about, but I don't think we have a lot of time left on today's podcast to do it. So maybe next time, maybe one of the next future, we'll go back over the subject in a little more detail on some of them things. Yeah, maybe maybe um, we've been talking about bringing in some uh, new faces for the podcast, or voices, I should say. Yeah, yeah, I start interviewing some of the other people that are doing either games for us or have different outlooks on different things that we wouldn't normally have. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I think that's about that for this week. Uh, Until next time. Thank you.